Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ashok. Today in this video, we will discuss about Odrop execution in Salesforce and this video will be divided into two parts where in first part, we will learn about what is Odrop execution and what all steps we have in it and in second part, we will cover some interview questions related to Odrop execution because this is the very important topic in Salesforce interviews and in development and as a developer, we should know about it very well to build efficient and scalable applications. And in interviews also, we often see scenario based questions from order of execution. So if you just want to learn order of execution or if you are preparing for interviews, then in both cases, this video can help you a lot. So please watch this video till the end. Okay. And now let's start with first part and discuss what is order of execution. So, you know, Salesforce is the cloud based software company which has many built in applications. So, customers can select and use applications as per their requirement. And now, in case if customers want to add or modify some features, then Salesforce provides many tools and technologies to perform customization with or without code, like app builder, process builder, flows, validation rules, assignment rules, auto response rules, Apex triggers, and many other tools are available to implement custom UI and logics. Right. And now if we talk about order of execution, then we can say in Salesforce, order of execution just like a step by step process that determines how different processes or tools will get executed when we perform DML operation. And also it ensures that everything is done in a specific order and nothing is missed. It means as we have discussed in Salesforce, we have lots of tools to inject our custom logics in Salesforce request pipeline like flows, validation rules, duplicate rules, triggers, assignment rules and many others. So while performing DML operations, in which order these tools will get executed or who will get executed first, then who will be next, right? So this is the problem we have here. So now to solve this problem, Salesforce has already defined an order to execute these tools step by step that is called order of execution where Salesforce already mentioned who will get executed first, then who will be next and so on. Okay. For example, flows will get executed first, then triggers, then validation rules, then duplicate rules, then assignment rules. Though this is just an example, but yeah, in order of execution, Salesforce has already defined execution steps to perform a complete transaction. Okay. And now let's see what all steps are getting involved and in which order they execute when we perform any insert, update or upset operations and for delete and undelete operations, order is quite different. We'll talk about that later. Okay. So in Salesforce, we can save data through various ways like through user interface, custom effects, APIs or any other data loader tools, right? But finally to save that data into Salesforce database, that request will go to the Salesforce platform. And now before saving data into database, or to complete this request, Salesforce will follow some steps where first is load original record from database or initialize record. It means when we are coming for update operation, then Salesforce will take older record from database and load those values into the transaction. Or if we are coming for insert operation, then Salesforce will initialize new object with default values. So this is the first step where our object is getting initialized either with old values or default values and after that Salesforce will load new values to record from request which means suppose as a user we are trying to create a new contact so on UI we will enter contact details in fields and click on save button so when we click on save button then that request will go to the Salesforce platform and if we are creating new contact then it means we don't have any older data into database so in that case, Salesforce will initialize new record with default values. And in second step, Salesforce will pull those contact details from request. I mean, whatever user has entered on UI, those values are passed in request. So here in second step, Salesforce will get those values from request and override the old values with new in relevant fields. For example, let's say we are trying to update contact's last name and earlier contact last name was A, but now we are trying to save record with last name B. Then here in second step, A will be replaced with B in last name field. Okay. And after loading new values in record, Salesforce will check that is this request came from standard UI edit page. If yes, then first Salesforce will check layout specific rules. 
because on page layout also we can do some configurations on fields like we can make field required or read only right so in case if request came from a standard ui edit page then first salesforce will check layout specific rules and after that it will check other system validations like field max size is this field required at object level or not and other system validations and after that custom validation rules will get executed i mean whatever custom validation rules we have created on object those will get executed here okay and here if any validation get failed then salesforce will return this request from here only with a specific error message and if everything is fine till now like record has passed all the system and custom validation rules then transaction will move on third step that is execute before record trigger flow so now on this third step salesforce will run all the record trigger flows which are configured to run before save and after that salesforce will run all the before triggers which are created on this object i mean you know we can create multiple triggers on single object and there is no validation from salesforce side but if you have created multiple triggers on same object with same trigger event then order of execution cannot be controlled i mean we can't specify which trigger will get run first and which will be next right so that's why it is recommended to create only one trigger per object but yeah here on fourth step salesforce will run all the before triggers and after that once again salesforce will run system and custom validations except layout specific rules and why salesforce will execute these validations again because you know in before flow or trigger we can update current record values as well so there may be a case where we can make any required field blank or store invalid values i mean due to changes in current record fields maybe we can violate any validation rules so that's why salesforce will execute these validation rules again right and after that duplicate rules will get executed so here if you found any duplicate record then request will be returned from here without saving record and no further steps will get executed but if no duplicate found and still everything is fine then record will get saved into database but still pending to commit which means record gets saved temporarily so if we get any kind of issues in further steps then we can roll back or remove this record from database right and after saving record into database as a next step salesforce will execute all the after triggers i mean here salesforce will execute all the code which is written in after trigger context like in after insert or after update okay and then salesforce will execute assignment rules and auto response rules so on the same object if you have created any assignment rule or auto response rule then those will get executed here and after execution of auto response rules salesforce will execute all the workflow rules which are created on this object and if you are performing field update from workflow rule then system validations and triggers will run again why because you know we can update current record fields from workflow rule as well so in that case salesforce will execute system validations and triggers again but not duplicate rules and custom validation rules so this is the case here i mean if we made any field update from workflow rule and due to that there may be a chance to violate custom validation rules right so this is the loophole we can say here in salesforce request pipeline okay and after execution of workflow rules salesforce will execute acceleration rules and as a next step salesforce will execute all the flow automations like process builder processes flows which are launched by process builder or workflow rules right so in this step mainly salesforce will execute process builders and all the flows which are launched by process builders or workflow rules and after that salesforce will execute record trigger flows which are configured for after record save and then as a next step salesforce will execute entitlement rules and if record contains any roll up summary field then that will be calculated here and after calculation that field will get updated in parent record and then parent record will also go through save process i mean whatever tools we have created on parent object those will also get executed like triggers flows workflows and others and if there are roll up summary fields created on top of parent record as well then those fields also get calculated and updated in grant parent object and then grant parent object will also go through save process okay and after calculation of all the roll up summary fields 
Salesforce will execute criteria based sharing rules and if everything is fine till now then Salesforce will commit that record into database. It means record is permanently get saved into database and finally Salesforce will perform some post commit logics like sending mail and NQ asynchronous jobs. I mean during this transaction if we call any asynchronous process like future methods, queuable and base classes then now those will get added into respective queues to execute and also asynchronous record trigger flows will get start executing okay so these all steps are the part of order of execution it means whenever we perform any insert update or upset operation then record goes through all these steps before saving into database and if we talk about steps which involves in delete and delete operations then in that case steps are quite different like this load new value this step will not execute and also custom validations and duplicate rules will not get execute and instead of this save record step few other steps will get involved like cascade delete and record delete and also acceleration rules will not get execute right and also there is no sense to execute these steps in case of delete and undelete operations so salesforce followed different request pipeline for delete and undelete operations okay and now I think you have fair idea about what is order of execution and what all steps are involved. So now as discussed in introduction, let's see some interview questions which are often asked from order of execution. So first question we have, what will happen if you update same field in before trigger and in before flow, then which value will get saved into database? Let me explain it little more. Suppose we are saving contact record and on contact object, we have created one trigger with before insert trigger event and also created a before save flow and now what we are doing suppose we are updating email field from both triggers and flow so here question is which value will get saved into database the value which we are assigning in trigger or which we are assigning in flow so i think you got question now and if we talk about answer then we can say whatever is assigned in before trigger will get saved into database why because as we have seen in order of execution steps before flow get executed prior to before trigger so whatever value we will assign in before flow that will get overridden by value which we are assigning in trigger okay so if you remember order of execution steps then this question is quite easy for you right and now let's talk about next question can we update field value in after record triggered flow for triggering record so to understand it better Let's again take an example of contact means let's say we have created an after flow on contact object and we are trying to update field values for current record which is the triggering record for flow. I mean we are not updating related records we are trying to update current contact record. So the question is can we update triggering record in after flow or not? So if we talk about after trigger then answer will be no. I mean in after trigger we can't update field values for triggering record but in after flow we can update field values in triggering record as well but this is not a good practice because this may cause recursion okay now next question we have what will be the output of following code snippet suppose we have triggers on contact and account object like on account object we have created a demo trigger with after insert event and here what we are doing we are trying to insert one contact per account and before performing insert operation we have a system dot debug statement with value a and after insert statement we are printing b in logs right and if we talk about contact demo trigger then here we have before and after insert events and in case of before insert we are printing c and in case of after insert we are printing d okay now here we need to answer in which order these characters will print in debug logs like will it be a b c d or anything else so maybe this question you will not ask in interviews but this will help you to understand how actually code flows in real time i mean you will get to know in which order these lines will get execute so you know code always execute top to bottom so from line second to tenth these lines will execute one after another because here we are not calling any different method but here on line number 11 we have written insert statement with context list which means now before executing line number 12 first salesforce will complete this line and will start inserting these contacts 
So on route execution, we'll start for these contact records. I mean, whatever tools we have created on contact object, those will start executing. So this 12th line will not execute until all the steps complete for contact record. Then that's why first contact trigger will get called first time for before insert and second for after insert. So finally output will be like A, C, D and B, which means before executing this line number 12, this trigger get called first for before insert. So printed C and next for after insert and printed D. And after completion of save process for contact records, control again reach to the account trigger and execute this line number 12. Okay. So while writing code, you should always remember this thing, like how code will flow, which part of code will execute first and which will next. Okay. And now next question we have, the changes to roll of some refilled value cause triggers to fire then I think this we have already discussed that once roll of summary field calculation done, then value will get updated in parent record and then parent record will also go through save process, right? So obviously trigger will get called for parent record as well, okay? And next question we have, what will be the trigger context if trigger get called again due to workflow rule field update? So as we have discussed, we can update field using workflow field update as well and also we have discussed that system validations and triggers will run again if we update field using workflow right so now here question is in which context trigger will get called like an insert or update for example let's say we have a trigger on contact object which contains trigger events for insert and update like before insert after insert before update and after update so now let's say we are trying to update new contact then first time trigger will get called for before insert event and then for after insert and once we will update field using workflow rule then our trigger will get called again but this time context will be update so it will call for before update and after update okay so in nutshell if you are making field update from workflow rules then after triggers will get called in update context okay and now next we have, can we access related records data in trigger context records? For example, let's say we are working on contact trigger and here what we want to do, we want to get contact account details like contact account ID and name and we are getting this contact from trigger context variable like from trigger.new. So this is the question here we have, like can we access related records data in trigger context records, right? then answer will be no in trigger context records we can only get data for current record but additionally if you want to get data for related records then in that case we have to use soql query okay and now next question we have what will happen with auto numbers if transaction gets rolled back in salesforce so you know we have an auto number data type in salesforce which help us to generate a sequential number in given format and that number is automatically incremented for each new record but here we are talking about rollback scenario i mean suppose we have created an auto number field on contact object and while inserting contact record we got an error and transaction is rolled back which means everything is removed from database so here question is what will happen with that auto generated number will that also get rolled back or same number can be used for next transaction or record so the answer is auto numbers will also get removed and will not be reused why because this may cause data inconsistency okay so in nutshell we can say auto numbers will always generate unique values and if transaction get rolled back then that number will also removed okay so i think that's it for this video where we have discussed about order of execution and few interview questions related to order of execution so if this video helped you to learn something new then please help me too by like and subscribe my youtube channel and also share your feedback in comment and if you want me to cover any other topics that also you can share with me in comments okay thank you so much for watching i will see you in next video